Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. Well, it is another just gray, drizzly, yuck, depressing. Now, just after sunset on a Thursday night, September 26, 2024. So, uh, one of the things that I did today is I just wrote a check for $1,047, well, a money order, which cost me $7 for the money order, so $1,054 that I just wrote a check for a money order uh, to give to the public education system of, uh, of Tioga County, New York to, you know, to educate, uh, otherwise known as to brainwash the little minions here in uh, upstate New York, how to become good little slaves to the system and, and, and consumers and breeders and all of that uh, to become little cogs in the wheel of global industrial civilization. And uh, so it was a a man at the bank, shockingly, and I just asked him, I, I, I said, I said, by any chance, do you have any kids? And he goes, no, I don't have any children. And I, and I stuck my hand out to shake hands with me, and he, uh, and he kind of looked at me confused and kind of took my hand very cautiously to shake. And uh, so I told him, I said, you know, I just turned 65 uh, a few days ago. I said, I've never had a child. And I figure conservatively, I have paid $100,000 over a lifetime easily, I think, because I used to actually make money. Uh, that, that and own, I've owned a lot of property, so easily a hundred thousand dollars. I might have paid two hundred thousand uh, dollars to uh, to fund public education to quote educate other people's little spawn. That's you know, it's only property owners who fund. Uh, who fund public education. So if you don't own property uh, and, and you have 12, if you're some welfare mother with 12 kids, uh, you see what I'm saying? They get a free ride, yet all of these rich, evil landlords like Sam Mitchell uh, are, are footing the bill and, uh, and I was, and, and, and the guy was like, you know, like he had never thought of this. And I said, maybe there ought to be a cap uh, of like when we hit $50,000 uh, of uh, educating other people's children. When we have, I have never had a child spend one minute uh, in, in a public school for the simple reason I don't have any kids. All right, and, and he was thinking, you know, I, yeah, and, and he was going along with it. So uh, $1,047 uh, of my money going down the toilet uh, today. So I come back here and uh, have an email from the only friend I have that lives in an eco-village. This is this Doomer chick name Andrea that I have had the pleasure of interviewing here at Collapse Chronicles this summer. So uh, Andrea sent me this article about the Kamala Harris baby bonus, this $6,000 check uh, that Kamala wants the U.S. taxpayers to uh, just write a check to any clueless moron in the United States breeding. Uh, I, I've mentioned this one a couple of times. You know, you, you can imagine that uh, that Kamala Harris is really going for the welfare mother 
and the uh, and the trailer trash tweaker vote. Every one of these, any let's be honest here, any female reading this saying uh, if Kamala Harris is president, all I've got to do uh, is find a hard dick to knock me up and uh, and I can get six thousand uh, dollars to go buy more meth. Uh, it, it, she is really going for the welfare mother and tweaker vote. Uh, it, it, anyway, I've, I've had a couple of uh, I've mentioned this just kind of in passing and some other rants, uh, but I've never done a whole video on it. But I'm thrilled to see that this uh, excellent column that Andrea sent me was by one of my uh, Collapse Chronicles heroes. And I have to, I have to admit, just, you know, so many of these guys just fall through the crack. This is Dave Gardner. Dave Gardner, who is, uh, you know, a perennial presidential candidate. And Dave Gardner, who is running for president in 2024, uh, although he sheepishly admits he is voting for Kamala because, uh, you, you, you know, you know why he is voting for Kamala Harris. He is voting against uh, Don, Donald Trump for all, all kinds of reasons, uh, but I have had the uh, pleasure of interviewing Dave Gardner right here at Collapse Chronicles back when I actually used to interview people. I will try to remember to put the link on here with my interview with Dave a few years ago, but if I forget to, just put in Dave Gardner uh, interview. But, uh, so Dave has a Substack website called Dave the Planet, you know, kind of a uh, takeoff on Save the Planet called Dave the Planet. And this is his latest essay. So uh, this is pretty much my, you know, what I would have to say. And now I see I have set down my glasses somewhere. And okay, here they are. And I need glasses to find my glasses. Now, of course, a, a, a couple of differences between me and Dave Gardner. And this is spelled G-A-R-D-N-E-R. -E no vowel between the D and the N. Dave Gardner. Uh, is I am not voting for uh, Kamala Harris. If I were voting, I would probably vote for Dave Gardner. You know, after JF, JF, after RFK killed that bear and and all the rest of it. Uh, and also, Dave is not quite ready. You know, to uh, promote. Uh, Hopefully, voluntary sterilization. Dave Gardner's not quite ready to take the public stance that I am of uh, being a cheerleader of involuntary, involuntary sterilization of the human race, but he, he's doing more than most. So anyway, we're going to let Dave Gardner go right up to the line with this uh, in his essay from a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> What's wrong with Kamala Harris's baby bonus proposal? We need to redefine what pro-family means. Take it away, Dave Gardner. <clears throat> Presidential candidate Kamala Harris, you know, who he does support, uh, last week proposed a major expansion of the child tax credit. She envisions a new $6,000 tax credit that's, uh, you know, just giving them six grand for families during the first year of a child's life. A day doesn't go by that we don't hear about how difficult and expensive it is to raise a family. 
the price of daycare is ridiculous, we hear constantly. Is it the federal government's job to remedy this? Do we owe it to couples to make it affordable to have a child? There appears to be an assumption that we do, but that is an unexamined assumption. It's time we put it under the microscope. So there's three parts to uh, this bullshit assumption. Number one, is conceiving and raising a child an experience that is so special no one should be deprived of it? So taxpayers should subsidize the cost for those who cannot otherwise afford it. Yeah, can you say welfare queens and, and uh, tweakers? Number two, or is committing parenthood, I, I love that term, committing parenthood. Number two, or is committing parenthood providing a service to society, one valued highly enough that all taxpayers should pitch in to subsidize the cost for new parents, and, and, and I'm assuming he keeps talking about parents. My guess is I don't know. I am assuming uh, that there would be no reason that you have to be a married woman to get the money. I'm just guessing. Number three, or if not number one or number two, is a baby bonus the only way to prevent widespread child poverty I would, of course, argue that a baby bonus is the number one way to expand and exacerbate child poverty. Because it costs a, a shitload more than any $6,000 to raise one of these little spawn. So we give them $6,000. So, so uh, you know, go out there and have a kid. It costs $300,000 to raise the little fucker. And, 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 and uh, who do you think is going to be picking up the tab uh, for the next 18 years, if not the next, if not the next 80 years? It's the U.S. taxpayer. Uh, good Lord. Uh, Dave did not go far enough in this essay, but at least it's a good start. Okay. As for point number one, there are plenty of experiences. Some may prize more than parenthood. For some, it might be a trip to Disneyland. For others, it could be to live in a palace with a ballroom and 20 bathrooms. If you cannot afford it, do not come to me or the federal government for assistance. If we are subscribing to point number two, let's examine that assumption that bringing children into the world and raising them is a societal good. I think this is a common assumption. Well, it's a common, but not total, you know what I'm saying. I think this is a common assumption. After all, in order for our species to survive and thrive, we must replace ourselves, right? Otherwise, it just, it just wouldn't be fair to ask child-free taxpayers to cover the parenting cost for others. But what if we overachieve? What if we have propagated to the point that our demands are crushing the planet? What if we have been so successful that adding another child is no longer a benefit to society? What if society, and especially our children, would benefit from humankind taking a procreative break, bringing far fewer children 
into the world for a while. You can see why Dave Gardner's uh, never-ending run for president has been so successful over the years. <clears throat> Few like to talk about it, but that is exactly the situation in which we find ourselves. The planet's life-supporting ecosystems are taking a pounding from 8 billion people and a $100 trillion global economy. Species are being extinguished at an unprecedented rate. We are pumping rivers and aquifers dry, and our greenhouse gas emissions are overwhelming the atmosphere and baking the planet. So, while we would like raising a child to be joyful and not oppressively expensive, and we want all children to have their needs met, it's, it is not in our best interest to expand tax credits that signal our society wants you to make babies. Anything that puts dollars in your pocket based on having a child or based on the number of children you have is not a good idea. One exception might be if we provide a generous tax credit for couples who have after having one child, take measures to ensure they will not conceive additional children. A one child per family norm would be of great benefit. And of course, uh, I, I would uh, go the final step as I was talking about with this young man who doesn't have children. It's the non-breeders. Okay, who should be given tax credits? We should not, if you can prove that you have a vasectomy, or if you can prove, you know what I'm saying, that it is physically impossible for you to have a child, you should never have to pay one penny to educate children in public schools. They have it 180 degrees wrong. It's these goddamn breeders who should be giving people like me, and I don't even know if Dave Gardner is a breeder or not. I, I get the feeling that Dave Gardner is a breeder. Uh, Gloria Nanotti, can you find that out, whether Dave Gardner is a breeder? <clears throat> Where was I? I hope Vice President Harris did not propose this expanded tax, tax credit because she is alarmed about the so-called, quote, baby bust we have been reading about. I don't think she wants the U.S. to join the ranks of growth-addicted countries, such as Russia, Hungary, South Korea, and many more wringing their hands over dropping birth rates and paying baby bonuses in an effort to get women birthing more consumers, workers, taxpayers, and soldiers. That is insulting and dehumanizing. But let's call this tax, cre tax credit what it is, a baby bonus. And let's be clear, let's be clear, dropping birth rates for a species in overshoot is a blessing. As for point number three, we all want to protect children from poverty, so we will need to find ways to ensure children's needs are being met while phasing out any program that could be interpreted as make a baby get a check. It won't be easy, but it will be possible once we recalibrate 
our compass, raising a child is more expensive than most realize. Uh, one USDA estimate puts the cost at over $300,000 for the first 17 years. It also requires a lot of parents' time and attention. We can parent much more successfully in one-child families, or we can non-parent much more successfully in zero-child families. Uh, families, I would add to that, Dave. Being pro-family should not mean turning women into baby factories. It should not mean quantity over quality. It should mean doing whatever it takes to ensure a healthy planet and good lives for children. Uh, well, no sense me uh, breaking in there. At this point in human history, that means everyone needs to know that we are in ecological overshoot and couples must get the message that small families freely chosen are one important part of respecting the rights of all children to be born onto a healthy planet with clean air, ample nutritious food, and pure water, and a life-friendly climate. And uh, I do want to uh, congratulate Dave Gardner for coming right up to the line of uh, Eco-Nazi. But if you enjoyed that, what are some other uh, essays that uh, Dave has written recently. <clears throat> Worrying population declines are actually a hopeful sign. Population in the Great Transition. Uh, a scientist warning to humanity on human population growth. How about how much does it cost to raise a child in 2024? Things for prospective parents to consider. Well, it costs $6,000 less if Kamala Harris gets her way. Here is the only child debunking the myth and welcome to overshoot. Have a nice day. <laughs> anyway, I will check out some of these other essays. And you can, and I just joined Dave Gardner's Dave the Planet Substack. I really wish I could remember if Dave Gardner is a breeder. I'm pretty sure that he is. But anyway, I think it's very safe to say that the Doomer chick in the eco condo, Andrea, who sent me this, will uh, <laughs> will never go down. Will never be collecting her six thousand dollar check. So, so Andrea, you're walking away from six thousand uh, dollars by uh, not being a a good little breeder and uh, following the Kamala Harris goose step. But, you know, we got to give Kamala some credit. Kamala is not a breeder. And anything else you can say about that woman, she does have that in her favor. All right, and with that, uh, your old non-breeder has to go uh, give himself a bag of popcorn credit to get over the pain of, of, of dumping another $1,047 down the toilet today. Bye, guys.